Hello, it's Karen. I thought I'd better respond to you by uh, video. Um, I can say a little bit more. I can explain a little bit more than I can if I text. I appreciate your messages. I'm glad you found me and I can help you. Um, I'm not sure it's going to be the kind of <laughs> answer you want, but it is an answer. Uh, and I, I believe it's the, the right answer from my experience. So first, let me say I'm videoing this. And to be able to share it with you, I'm going to post it on YouTube, but I'm going to unlist it, which means no one can see it except for you. And then when you're done with it, let me know and I'll, I'll delete it. Okay. Um, you know, I, I love, I loved your message. I'm glad you found me. I don't think there's any mistake. So that's the first thing. There's no mistakes here. And, uh, you're in Maine and I'm in Palm Springs, California. So I don't think people just stumble across things like this for no reason. I have a lot of experience with this. I myself am your mother, and yet I've helped a lot of families like you. And let's start by saying you're not a bad mother. This has nothing to do with your parenting. Zero to do with your parenting, okay? If anything, the reason I've waited a few days for you to watch some of my videos is I really want you to understand what alcoholism is. That's the first thing. Alcoholism is a mental illness. It's a mental illness it's her, it's her thinking, right? And she it's only picked up in the last, I think you said six years. And that's very common. You know, uh, things happen, she lost her husband. You know, life happens and people retire and then the pandemic hit and a lot of people really, their alcoholism got worse, right? So this is a mental illness. This isn't a choice. My mother has dementia and it's it's very difficult. I understand what you mean. I want my mom back. I want my mom back. The difference between my mom and your mom is that your mom has a chance and my mom most likely is not going to go backwards with her mental illness. Your mother's in mental illness could be treated if she wants to. So and the biggest thing that stood out in all of that text you sent me, all that information, uh, is that she doesn't want help. Not yet. And the reason she doesn't want help yet is because you're there taking care of things. Okay, making sure the house doesn't burn down, driving her around, looking after her. There's no reason to get better if somebody's taking care of you. And I say that because that's, that's me. So I do know that for sure. So I know the best thing that you're hoping that I say is, oh my gosh, guess what? I have this place that she can go and you can send her there even if she doesn't want to go, right? <laughs> and they're going to cure her and they're going to fix her and they're going to send her back to you, the mother you've always wanted. And I'm sorry, but that is not going to happen. There are a million places she could go that we could find for her. Maybe not a million places to go with Medicaid, but there are places we could have her go if she wanted help and any of them will work if she wants help. So you mentioned that she went in and went to McLean's, which is one of the best places. Now, if you know McLean's, McLean's is actually a behavioral health, a mental health place. That will help you connect the fact that alcoholism is a mental illness, okay? She's suffering from a mental health issue, not a I don't love my daughter and grandkids issue, all right? It's not a I hate you issue. It's a mental health issue. If you can, first thing is identify that and separate emotionally, your little child and your mother, you have a person in your life with mental health issues. Now, the reason that your family has backed up is because they know they can't help her if she doesn't want help. And it's like helping someone, what your experience is, what you're experiencing right now is like when you see someone drowning you jump in to help someone that's drowning. If they don't relax and let you pull them out, they will pull you under with them. And that's what you're experiencing. You're suffering from alcoholism, her alcoholism. You are powerless over her alcoholism. You are powerless over her. You are powerless over how your kids feel about you. You are powerless over your financial situation. You have faced utter and complete powerlessness. 
I have two in my life. If you've listened to a little bit of my story, you know, I was homeless, homeless mother, right? I, I get it, powerless over this illness. So that being said, how I can help you is I can help you. You need to help yourself. There's absolutely no reason that you can't survive this illness, okay? And your children. But you have to give up the idea that you can do it by yourself. You kept saying to me, I know you can't help me, nobody can. Yeah, people can help you. People can help you, I can help you. But just like your mother, you gotta want help which means you got to give up your own ideas of what you think's right and wrong. And here, let me decline this phone call. God, it's so hard. Uh, technology. You've got to just, you're just like your mother. I see these two people in this, in this storyline and your mother is refusing help. She knows it all, right? She knows what to do. She knows what she wants. And I see you, and you know what you want. You want her to get cured. You want her to go away somewhere. You could have a break. She'll get better and be released completely. Even if she goes to treatment, she might not stay sober. If she doesn't do the work, this disease is probably gonna take her. It would actually be a blessing if she got another DUI. I know she will go to jail, probably the best place for her the safest place for her. I might seem terribly blunt with you and this might seem kind of abusive. I'm not trying to be. I deal with this all the time. This disease is a killer, okay? This is a killer and it doesn't just kill the person who has it, it kills the families. So I want you to think about what you want to do with your life. You see, your children are going to end up leaving and going to school or get married or get their own place. As soon as they can, they're out of there, <laughs> right? Just like you wanna get out, they're gonna be out. You are a good mother. You've kept a roof over their head and food in their tummies, right? That's all your responsibility is, okay? That's your responsibility. Now, if she's not abusive to them, they could stay with her and you could leave, right? You got to be open-minded about how to survive this. And the first thing you got to do is you got to go back to Al-Anon. If you don't want to go to Al-Anon, you can go to meetings with me where we will take you through the 12 steps and we will get you an answer. It will change your life, but you have to want to do it. And I know it's not fair that you're not the drinker. Why should you have to do the work? But you are the codependent. You are the family and you need some help. Okay, and there are people that will help you with this and walk you through this and, and, and help you find a power greater than yourself because that's what's happening here. You're trying to do this all by yourself. And I'm not saying find God. I'm saying find some kind of power greater than yourself, whether that's the universe, the sun, the moon, the stars, the hummingbirds, whatever nature, uh, whatever that is for you. Maybe it's Al-Anon. Maybe that's the power greater than yourself, but you gotta get some help. You're gonna need to be supported through this. You're not a terrible person. Sorry, doing this outside. You're not a terrible person. You're not a horrible mother. You're a woman who's a child of a, an adult child of an alcoholic. And you're not the only one. And there are other people that walk through this that can help you. But you have to want some help. I've seen people like you end up helping themselves and getting an answer in their life and being able to stay in the house with the alcoholic and it doesn't bother him at all. But right now you don't have any tools for that and you need some tools. So why don't you listen to what I've said here and then comment back, think about it for a little bit. I don't know if you believe in God, if you pray, um, you do have family. They're just not willing to put up with the abuse and you are, so they're gonna let you do it. But I bet you as soon as you back out, your family's gonna support you more than you think because they're all survivors as well of this disease, not of your mother. You know, I need you to separate this. You're dealing with a disease here, a killer, like Freddy Krueger. 
okay? It's not your mother. Your mother loves you very much. And the things she's saying, listen, the things I said when I were done, I'm a mean drunk too. I would say things and cut people apart, things you can never take back. I've damaged people, I've hurt people, and I the only way that I can make any kind of a, you know, people are sick of I'm sorry. So the only way I can make a difference is trying to help others, which is what I'm trying to do with you. Make up for some of the, the, the shit I've done. So your mother's not alone, okay? Being a mean drunk is, is very common, and it's not about you. So why don't you- I'm not sure I understand. Oh, there's my watch. <laughs> God, technology, I'm telling you, it's driving me crazy. Um, so why don't you watch this and then respond, okay? Uh, let's talk about it. Let's get you to some, now everything's on Zoom. There's counseling, there's meetings. Uh, my group does Zoom meetings. We do conference calls. There's no reason you can't get better and you can't survive this and you can't get back on your feet and move out and let your mom have her own life. If she wants to drink herself in her home, drink herself to death, it's her business. It's not yours. She doesn't want to get well. Leave her alone, right? If she ends up in the hospital, then there's another opportunity that her consequences, that someone's going to say, a doctor, someone's going to say, hey, you need to stop, okay? She gets a DUI and goes to jail. There's another opportunity. A judge is going to tell her, you need to go to AA and you need to stop. And just like if she gets told to go to AA, because that's what a treatment center will do. Once she gets out of a treatment center, she has to treat her illness by going to Alcoholics Anonymous and doing the 12 steps. So why would you be any different? If you want her to do it, why won't you do it? Why won't you go to Al-Anon meetings or, or open 12 step meetings like the one I go to and do the steps and try to get a new life, right? You, you, you can't change anyone else, but you can change yourself. And by changing yourself, you change the world. Okay, so listen to this, let me know what you think, and we'll talk about it a little bit later. Okay, you're not alone. Hang in there.